how do cuts actually heal? Well, once the skin is broken, and in order to prevent dirt, bacteria, and other harmful substances from entering the wound, the body's first response is to flush out the wound with blood. And depending on how deep the wound is, where it's located, especially regarding the location of blood vessels, the flow of blood can vary significantly. Now this itself can be life-threatening if the body loses too much blood. This means that the body will try to limit this by constricting the blood vessels in the area. The greater the damage, the more constriction occurs. The body now has to attempt to seal off the cut. This is done when blood comes into contact with collagen in the skin, triggering the action of platelets or thrombocytes. And these tiny cells carried in the blood stick to the edges of the blood vessels and secrete thrombin or fibrinogen into the wound tract, which activates fibrin, a form of collagen. It now acts like a web or mesh, with the strands sticking more and more platelets together. Now, providing the wound isn't too bad, they can bridge the gap of the cut, plug in the hole. The gaps in the web become finer and finer, letting through less and less through the gaps, trapping the larger particles in the blood. Most noticeably, numerous of these are the red blood cells, which strengthen the clot. This fix is only a temporary one, as the fibrin-based plug isn't all that strong. But the presence of vast quantities of platelets in the wound site stimulate rapid cell growth and division. Fibroblasts also collect at the wound site, releasing large quantities of collagen, which strengthens the plug, but also leaves behind a telltale scar mark once the wound is healed. Now, whilst the wound is still in its early stages of healing, it's vulnerable to infection, as the new barrier is nowhere near as good as the skin was before the injury. At this stage, white blood cells cluster around the wound site, ready to combat anything that gets into the skin, but also to remove dead tissue and assist in minimising scarring. Once the initial process has been complete, the body then starts to replace the temporary fix with a new layer of keratinocytes or skin cells, working from the outer edges of the wound, moving inwards till they meet in the middle, the centre of the wound. These cells move over the top of the granulation layer of the new skin, which is the pink layer with lots and lots of tiny blood vessels and underneath the scab layer. This border area can normally be identified by a white thin ring around the wound. As they move inwards, they dissolve the scab layer and complete the repair job. Now this is what happens in a healthy functioning body. However, sometimes the clotting process doesn't work perfectly. In the case of haemophilia, the clotting process is severely impaired, meaning that a minor cut can be life-threatening as it continues to bleed. Alternatively, platelets or thrombocytes form a clot inside the body. That clot can move around inside the body until it blocks a vital part of the body causing thrombosis, stroke or heart attack. So that's an introduction into how cuts heal.